What is going on everybody and welcome to part 15 of the Python Plays Grand Theft Auto 5 and does a self-driving car series. Uh, first thing you'll probably notice here is uh, we are now streaming. So if you want to watch the AI, uh, I'm, my goal is to stream this 24-7 live. Um, at least that's the goal. I'll talk about that in a moment. Looks like we're about to go swimming, however. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, so twitch.tv slash centex and you can watch it uh, stream. I I've, have been having some issues with getting it to stream at a nice constant uh, bitrate. Uh, so actually right now what you're looking at is actually the stream using my phone's internet, which is really depressing. I mean, my phone's cellular data is performing better than my internet. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, that's that. Also, one interesting thing you'll get to see here in a moment is one of the reasons why we can actually stream this 24-7 is if the the player doesn't move enough in a certain amount of time, they will it'll just be teleported out to a, a random out of 10 coordinates, basically, that I've chosen. So it'll pretty much run 24-7, even if it gets itself into a really bad situation. Sometimes you'll find yourself in someone's, like, backyard or something, and there's really no way you would ever get out of that backyard. So um, this kind of helps correct for situations like that where you, you literally, the car could never drive out. So um, anyways, that's, that's that. Um, the, probably the biggest thing you'll notice from the actual AI itself is it's now a first person view. So I'm still pretty confident we could have done it in a third person view, um, but I ended up changing to a first person view just because that's really more likely to be the situation for a self-driving car. Uh, it's not going to have some sort of drone flying behind it in third person, so, yeah. Um, so that's that. Also, the, the AI now has its, uh, its own computer now, so that's the, a new machine that just runs the AI now. There's no way I could stream all this on my main computer and actually get any work done ever. So I actually ended up building this and putting it all together and then training a model the whole time I was out of town for a few days in New York. Uh, so what you see here is the results of about four days of training. Now, interestingly enough, this is, this, the GPU here is a uh, Titan X Pascal. The GPU I have in my main machine is actually a Titan X Maxwell. And over the course of four days, uh, they trained the model in about the same amount of time. There's really no statistically significant difference in how far each one got. They were basically the same, uh, which is kind of strange. Uh, I don't know if it's a bad GPU or if this one's like super good and I just don't know it um, But yeah, that's kind of odd that they would be the same speed uh, I was using tensorflow and TF learn on top. So it could also be some sort of software related issue um, So anyways, uh, I think that's about it as far as like the major changes um, It's still just a convolutional neural network So every action is based on a single frame. It just looks at a frame and it makes a it makes a movement choice. Uh, I did try in the past on one of the older models that was a little more sporadic. What I would do is I would take the previous five rolling frames, take the prediction from those, and then do the average prediction, whichever, or the mode rather, uh, prediction. And that actually worked pretty well for that model. But for this model, actually I am constantly, every single prediction is its own. There's no, there's no mode, there's no nothing. It's all just raw, whatever the prediction is, it does it. So the fact that it works at all and actually seems to kind of, at times, drive through traffic pretty well, avoid things, follow lanes, that kind of stuff, is incredible to me. Like, it, I wouldn't have thought it would do this. The other thing I've seen it do a lot of is it'll like engage in a turn, it'll start going sideways and sliding, basically drifting or power sliding through a turn, and it will catch the turn and continue. Uh, I did not think that would be possible, but somehow, it does that, and I wonder if it's just because its reaction times are just so amazing that it can just get away with it. Not in the same way a human can, but it just does it because it re can react so fast. I'm not really sure, but anyway, uh, yeah. So I mean, I'm overall I'm like super impressed with <laughs> with this AI. Now I'm not really sure if just more training data would make it even better, or if we'd have to make the model a little more complex. But to be honest, I mean, the AI already acts way better than I would have ever imagined. Um, with such rudimentary kind of rules, basically. It's just going off frames. It doesn't know historically what, what it's been doing. It doesn't know its movements. It doesn't know historical frames. So, I mean, that's just nuts to, to me anyway. So moving forward, I'm, I'm contemplating adding some recurrent layers, 
possibly. The other thing is, this is interesting, it normally doesn't actually do this. One of the older models used to do this all the time and that's why I did the average, but um, normally it actually doesn't whipsaw like that. So it's kind of odd that it's doing it now, of course, because I'm filming. <laughs> but that's kind of the reason why I actually did the random, or the, uh, the mode of movements. Um, anyway, moving on to the future, um, you know, some, some people were also making, you know, asking like, when's the next video coming out and all that? Well, they're just going to take a little longer <laughs> to come out, uh, between videos because I'm at the point now where the model takes, this model took four days, uh, and it also took multiple days to collect the data for the model. And in the future, models are probably going to take more like a week or two weeks or even a month, right? As we continue to get more and more training data, it's only going to take longer to keep making changes. And maybe the model's no good. Like maybe it doesn't actually work better than this or whatever. So it's really hard for me to, to put out videos as fast as I had been. And that's kind of why I wanted to put up the stream just because um, you can pretty much see what the AI is doing all the time now. So, so yeah. Um, the other thing I'm interested in doing here is collecting data from the stream. Right now I'm just running the stream. I'm trying to get to the, the stream to the point where it can just run 24 seven period and run smoothly that it's not a pain in the butt just to watch it. We're frustrating to watch it. Um, and we're almost there, just not quite yet. And once I get that, my plan is to start collecting data from the stream as it's running, not really from the stream, but from the computer that's streaming it from there, uh, collecting that data as it's streaming and validating it. Are we moving? You know, you can do pretty easy motion detection. Um, so are we moving? And then possibly overlaying optical flow, because with optical flow, I'm curious if we could actually circumvent doing recur uh, any recurrent layers and just simply adding optical flow to the frames, if that would um, if that would be enough. And I think probably recurrent layers would be good, but the performance would suffer both in training and then also just in testing. I think we'd suffer a lot in the frame rate. Um, but it would probably perform better, but with optical flow, we get exactly the same performance we're getting, but it's just a little bit more data per image um, that I think would probably be pretty useful to the AI as it's learning. So I'm curious to try that and both to use optical flow to train, but and also to validate data, we can use optical flow to figure out, are we moving? Did we just make a really abrupt, abrupt you know, direction change? Like, did we just crash into something basically? Um, so we can, we can use it kind of for both of those things. Anyway, that's all for now. If you have questions, comments, whatever, you can leave them below. Also, I have been seeing the pull requests on GitHub. Um, I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get to all of them, but hopefully next week, the week, basically when I release this video, I'm going to be going through all of those. There's one at least that I really want to get into, which is like a more granular control, which after seeing this model, I'm not positive it's necessary. I thought it was necessary when I had the models with much less training data, but after I've seen this model, uh, I'm not sure it's going to be necessary. So I really don't know at this point, but um, I still want to check it out anyway because it would be good for any open, pure open CV model. It would definitely work better. Um, anyway, other than that, uh, I think that's really all I want to add. If I'm forgetting something or if you've got any questions, feel free to ask below. If you want updates on what's going on or whatever, you can always just, just come to twitch.tv slash Centex pretty much all day. I'll have this on one of my monitors, and so I'll, I'll be here to chat if you've got questions or whatever. Um, uh, I think that's it. I'm probably forgetting something, but uh, that's it. That's all for now. Uh, questions, comments, leave them below. Otherwise, next time.